Hey everyone, this is Ian O'Byrne. We're taking a look at uh, setting up WordPress, customizing a theme. Um, this is a, a WordPress site that I just installed. This is brand new. Um, and so I'm basically putting together a nice little video tutorial showing you what I do. Uh, and this should complement the blog post that I've already put out. Um, so when I first load it up, um, you can see that I'm at the URL. Um, the key thing here is that I have the WP uh, hyphen admin, and that allows me to log in. Right now, I'm on the dashboard for my website. Um, you know, I can see all of the different options here and the different places to go in and um, add content or remove content or change the settings. So this is pretty much the dashboard giving me an overview of everything. Uh, one of the first things that I suggest you do is that you go into your updates section finish all the updates for the website uh, this is a brand new installation of wordpress so everything is uh, all set um, but as i note in the in the blog post you know i would definitely go in select all update any of the content that you have there just to make sure that everything is all set ready to go as you get started um, once you finish the updates my next suggestion is that you uh, head in to posts and when you first get started, you have a hello world post in WordPress. Uh, I feel like it's easier to add some dummy content, some dummy posts and dummy pages as you get started, just so that when you change the theme and you look for a theme, you have something that you can change it to and get a better idea of uh, you know, what this theme will look like as you play with it. So one of the things that I suggest is that you go in, uh, I'm on uh, in the post section, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add new and I'm going to add a couple dummy posts and a couple dummy pages just to get an idea of what this thing ultimately will look like when I add in the new theme. So this is a new post section. I'm going to say, hopefully spell it correctly, post one. Come on now. Post one. This is post one. Um, I've also suggested that as you're here, you go in and add a featured image. So I'm going to take a look and see what I have for images here. These are things that I already uploaded uh, previously. I'm going to set this as the featured image. It will add it over. I'm also going to add an image in the post to see what that looks like. So I'm going to go to media and these are things that I've already have in there. I'm going to add this picture right in the middle of the post. I'm going to hit publish. Once that publishes and it's uploaded to my site, I'm going to go back in and I will add uh, another new post. So I'm going to basically call this post two. And once again, this is post two. Come down here. I'll add another featured image because I want to see what these featured images look like in my post um, when everything is uploaded. So I'm going to go up top, hit publish. And then finally, I'm going to go in and add in a third post here. And this is basically post three, same thing, uh, nothing new. Uh, what we're basically doing is just putting in some dummy posts to take a look at dummy post to see what this theme will look like as we upload this thing and what it acts like when we change the themes. So I'll pick one last image to be the featured image. I'm going to go back in and publish. So finally, I'm going to go over to the pages section. Once I'm in pages right now, as I start, I have a home page. I'm going to add a couple dummy pages as well because I want to see what that will look like. So I'm going to say uh, I'll add an about me page. And this I can't type today. This will be my about me page. I'm not going to add a picture to this. Uh, I'm just going to hit publish. And 
And then finally, I'm going to add a teaching materials page. And this is my teaching content. And this could be any type of content that you want to have. Um, this is an opportunity to start thinking about how you want to uh, organize your content on your site. So now if I go back to my dashboard, you can see that I have more updates. Uh, as I said before, it's I feel like it's better just to go in and update everything and, and get everything ready to go. So I'm back at my dashboard now. If I click on posts, I can see my three posts along with the hello world post. Uh, these are ones that I just created. If I go to pages, I can see the pages that I just created. Um, and these are dummy posts and pages to see what this website will look like when I change the themes. So now if you go into appearance and go to themes, we can get an idea of the different themes that are out there. Um, and what a theme will do is it'll change the look, the feel, um, some of the fonts, some of the colors of your website. So it'll drastically change what's happening on your site based upon what you have there. So typically WordPress will come with the pre-installed themes so you can see they're named after the years that they were launched. You're more than welcome to use some of those themes. It matters what works best for you. If you wanna add something new, I'm gonna go up to add new. So if you go to add new, you can scroll through and get an idea of different themes that are out there. Um, there are themes that are available right through WordPress. There are other themes that you can search online uh, and find and you can download a, a zip file and upload it for your theme. But one of the easiest ways really is to come in and take a look through the themes that are available right here within WordPress. As you look through a theme, you can get a general idea of what the theme is all about. So if I click on the details and preview, I can get an overview of the, the theme. Uh, you, know, you can check to see what this thing would look like on your website. Uh, but one of the best ways that I've found it, uh, the easiest way to figure out what this would look like is by installing it to your site. So if I click on the install button, it's going to download the theme and add it to your website. Finally, I'm gonna hit activate. It's gonna activate the theme on my site and give me an idea of what this thing ultimately looks like. You might get some uh, requests to add plugins to the theme. You can decide to add those plugins right now or you can wait. Uh, at this point, when you're checking out different themes at the very beginning, my advice is to generally wait, uh, but my, by all means, you can install those plugins and then go back at a later date to add or remove or update the plugins. But right now, I suggest basically waiting off on that. So I've just installed and activated this theme. So if I go over to my blog, when I'm looking at themes and I'm shopping for new themes, what I'll usually do is I'll open up a new tab to my website. So this is my website. I have the tab here with uh, behind the scenes at WordPress and I have a new tab open with my website. I can see that this has the new theme already installed. I can click through and look at my uh, website and see the different posts that I added. So I can see my home page has an icon there. My recent posts show up here. Um, I can see how this new theme is manipulating the content on my site. So if I go in to one of the posts, I'll go to that first post that I added. I can see the little uh, graphics that'll upload and bounce on my screen. I can see the uh, featured image and where that featured image loads. This is the image that I loaded in the middle of the page. Here's what the text will look like. And when I'm looking at the, the website to figure out if this theme is something that I want to use, I'm taking a look at where it loads the images. I'm also looking at, for me, I do a lot of writing and long form writing in my posts. I wanna see what the font looks like. What is the coloring of the font? There are some fonts that are uh, light gray or dark gray or black on a white or a light or even a, a darker background. I'm looking at 
some of the other information that is on the, the sides. I can move sometimes, change, sometimes delete this content. But you want to get a general overall feel for the theme and what the theme might look like. So if I decide that I don't want that, I can go back in and once again, same process, click on add new. I can go in and look at popular or latest. What I've often found myself doing is I'll look for a uh, keyword or theme. So if uh, a keyword for a theme. So if I type in minimalist, I can see different themes that are out there that that the author has labeled as being uh, a minimalist theme. So if I like this one here, I can click on once again details and preview. But once again, I think it's much easier just to install that theme uh, to get an idea of what this might look like. So if I click install, it's going to download the theme and it's going to install it on my site, but it doesn't do anything yet. So if I go back to my theme to my website here, I can see that nothing has changed. This is the same website that I just left. But if I go in and click activate, the theme that I just downloaded, it, this this typist theme is going to get installed and it, it's already installed, but it's going to activate. So if I go back to my site, click refresh, now it will load my website with the new theme added to it. Okay, so if I start here, click on my blog and see the main page, I can see the overall layout. Once again, I'm looking at where the different content loads, what does the home page look like, what do images look like what's the general font this font for me is a little bit easier to read but that's just the home page let's go into post one to see what these different posts will look like uh, within the site so i can see that it has changed the layout of the page now the content on the left as opposed to the right um, so i'm getting a general feel for what this uh, new theme will look like and i rather like this theme right now um, so i can take a look through at the different posts that are out there. Uh, if I go into categorized, I should be able to see a listing of my different themes. Uh, and I can see as it, earlier uh, I added featured images. You can tell on this theme, it doesn't load the featured image up top, but it loads the image that's in the post itself. So that's a little bit weird for me, but whatever. So I'm clicking through, I'm looking at my theme, and I'm trying to decide which theme I ultimately like and I want to use. Once again, if I'm in the dashboard, I can look at my posts. The posts have not changed. The posts do not disappear. If I go into pages, the pages that I created, those are all still there. Those do not disappear. All of my content is still on the site, but the, the challenge is as you change the theme, the way that all of that content is organized will change. So lastly, if I go in and I want to change back to the primary theme that I start with for uh, WordPress this year. So if I go to 2017 and hit activate, it will activate that theme for me. I can go back and I can refresh the page and it will bring me back to the way my website looked when I first started. So I can scroll through and see what my pages and posts look like and you can see this theme here is a little bit more difficult to work with and this is the stock theme it's a little bit more difficult to work with because we can't see where the posts are loading where the pages are loading i need to go in and change the menus around so i can make that information available to me so the posts have not disappeared the pages have not disappeared they're all still there but the theme is changing how that information loads on your website. So that's one of the main reasons why I suggest when you get started, set up the dummy posts, set up the dummy pages, get everything in there, just fake content. And it took me three minutes to add a couple fake pages and posts, go through, spend a little bit of time. And by a little bit of time, I mean a couple hours playing with different themes, searching for different themes, they will all offer you something different. You have to figure out what works best for you for the website that you are trying to create for the identity that you're trying to present. So now let's say that I have, have settled on this theme called the typist. I'm going to hit activate, make sure that it's uh, fully installed, fully activated on my site. I can go 
once again and check and make sure everything is loading the way that it's supposed to. I'm going to go back and, and once again, this is when I know this is the theme that I want to keep. I'm going to go back and I'm going to get rid of some of these other themes. If I know I don't want this Sydney theme anymore, I can click on it and go to delete. It will ask me if I want to remove the files. And once again, all it's doing is the files that I downloaded and installed at the beginning, it's removing those files. So if I go into appearance and themes, I'm going to get a list of all of the themes that are there. These are the WordPress themes that are pre-installed. If you want to, you can delete those as well. There's really no need, um, but that's up to you. It depends on how you want to run your website. So now I have the typist theme. It's installed. It's active in my uh, WordPress site. I'm going to go in and click on customize. So it's either here, but also in the dashboard, if I go to themes and customize, for each theme, you will have different levels of customization. So this is one of the other things that you want to pay attention to. So when I first looked at the theme, I'm looking at the way that things are laid out on the site, the different posts and pages. If I go to customize, I can change a lot of content in the WordPress site. So I can change the title, the subtitle, the tagline, uh, where this logo is lining up so I can have it centered on the page or left or right. Do I want to change the copyright on the footer? So this content down here. Uh, do I want to have a site icon that loads? So you have to change, you know, upload an image that would serve as that site line, as that tagline, as that image. I can change the width. Um, I mean, this has a lot of things that you can change in the theme. I, I really like. I, once again, I do enjoy this. And there's an opportunity to upgrade to the pro version of this. So with themes, there are free and pro versions. When you look at any theme and you look at the demo, typically what you'll find is that the theme looks incredible. And then when you stop and you try to install it on your website, you find that there's a lot of extra work you have to do. I typically stick to free themes and then just add more and more uh, tweaks to it. Uh, there are a couple f uh, paid themes that I do use. I do use a paid theme for my main website. Um, the service has been okay. Up to this point, you know, I, I paid for a year of service uh, when I bought the theme. I could pay for more after that. The, the level of service in the theme was acceptable, I guess. I still had to do a lot of work in figuring out things on my own. I felt like the author of the theme, the creator of the theme, was not as supportive as I wish that they were. Uh, so if I look through, I can change a lot of this content. You're going to save and publish anything that you change there. And I definitely recommend if you see certain things that you like about the website, you should take time now to work your way through the customization and figure out what makes the best sense for you. What might you want to change? So maybe you fold that in as you're selecting a theme, what customization. But I typically suggest go through on looks alone initially. And then once you know what this looks like and works best for you, then go into customization, change a lot of this information here to see how it moves things around on your website. Uh, then once it's all saved and published, you can go back to your website and refresh it to see what changes. I would also suggest once you start, once you really identify a theme that you like, and as you start to play with the customization features, open up your website, meaning this URL, open up that URL on a tablet or a mobile device to see what this looks like on a smaller screen. Yes, this looks pretty good on a, on a wide screen uh, or a display for a computer or a laptop, but oftentimes we see people that are viewing our content on a mobile device or a tablet or a smaller screen. So you wanna make sure that your content uh, looks good and is readable on those different devices. So a lot of times it can be confusing when we look at those smaller screens. So once again, all we did is we started off with a clean install of WordPress. We're looking at selecting a theme. To select that theme, we added a bunch of dummy posts and dummy pages. Um, they were just very quick things that we added at the very beginning to see how they would align on the theme when we were all done. Uh, once you have that theme all set up that you like and you're happy with, we went into customization and changed some of those different elements. 
um, and you can continue to customize the theme over time. Later on, we're going to look at widgets and menus and all other uh, elements of this WordPress site to get it to be exactly what you want. But for right now, we're just picking a theme. So when you're all done and you have that theme set up and you know uh, you have the theme that you want for your website, all I suggest is go back in and let's delete these dummy posts. We know that we're not going to keep them. I'm even going to delete this Hello World post. So I'm going to click on all of these, select Move to Trash, and hit Apply. It's going to throw away those pages and posts that I just or those posts that I just created. Uh, once again, we don't need those. If you get to a certain point where you realize that you deleted something that you were not supposed to delete. If you look in the post section, I can go in and click on trash and it's going to show me all of the posts and pages uh, that I've deleted in the past and I can uh, restore these if I need to. While I'm here, I'm going to go back to pages and I can delete these as well. So I can go up to move to trash. I can also hover and go to trash and get rid of these. And for most of these posts and pages, these were things that we added just to figure out what theme we wanted to use. So with that, we're gonna wrap up because we're uh, a little over 20 minutes, but this is a, a video about starting up a WordPress site, setting things up so you can figure out what theme you would like to use with your WordPress site. And now that you have a look for your site that you like, something that you think you can work with um, and at least a good starting point, now we're gonna look at, uh, in future videos and future blog posts, we're gonna take a look at what to do with uh, your site, how to set up posts and pages, how to set up tags and categories, but basically building up that site. Uh, but for right now, it's just picking that theme. It's looking at where the text lines up and where the images line up on the page. You're scrolling through, you're looking at the different pages, you're seeing what the overall uh, functionality and feel of this site is all about. And once you have something that you're happy with and it looks good and has the general style that you want, you're going to go into that customized feature and see what other opportunities are there for you to tweak this. But for the most part, this is the starting piece of it. These are the bones of your WordPress site. From here on out, we're going to start to look at building this thing up and adding content. So with that being said, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, scroll back at any point or like that video if you, if you like any of this content. And please follow along with the blog and the channel if you like more content like this. Thanks a lot.